What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so today we're gonna do it a little bit different. Normally when I film videos, I'm in this garage here or I'm off the bike in some fashion. So today we're gonna do the video on the move. Uh, and I wanna talk about um, the five things that I really like best about the Vip Pillin 401. So first let me start off with there's a lot of things to like about these bikes. There's a lot of things that I really love about the Vip Pillin 401, but uh, to keep the video from going too, too long, I just wanted to highlight really the top five. And this is after ownership for, I think it's been about eight, eight, nine months now. So I've got a pretty good feel for it. I ride it pretty often. I ride it in traffic. I've ridden it on the freeway for a pretty long distance. I think uh, about 80 miles, I think one way. I think I've, I've ridden it. Um, you know, rented in town, used it for errands, go to friends' houses, go to the gym, things like that. So I have a pretty good feel of the mannerisms for this bike. It's not like one of those uh, five things I, I like about this bike after I've ridden it for 20 miles because, you know, it, it's a it's a demo from a dealer or whatever. So not that there's anything wrong with those uh, videos at all. Those have great information too. It's just this is going to be a little bit different in that I've owned this bike for eight, nine months or so, and I put about 20 some hundred miles on it. Done all the maintenance myself, done all the modifications myself and so forth. So I have a pretty good, um, pretty good feel for, for the bike. So anyways, guys, um, let's go ahead and start the video. Just to summarize, the five things that I really like about this bike are gonna be performance, appearance, aftermarket support, features, and overall value. So I'll go ahead and get into that into the video. And again, it's gonna be on the move today. So hope, hopefully you guys enjoy the sights and the sounds. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. I know in the past I've done some videos on some of the reliability issues and quality issues of these bikes. Uh, and basically, I, I don't wanna get, I don't wanna get people the wrong idea that I, I don't like this bike. Uh, this bike, I, I love this bike. I. I'm totally happy with the purchase. It does have its shortcomings, of course, but there's a lot more to like about it than there is to, to dislike, at least in, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been a perfect ownership experience. I've already kind of covered some of the issues that I've had and uh, some of the kind of anticipated issues that, that are on my mind at the moment just because of, of what I've seen as far as quality goes. But, uh, but overall, it's been a positive experience and, and in this class, there's there's nothing else I'd rather buy. I, I don't regret the purchase at all. If I could go back in time, I would still buy this bike again. Um, but uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. So so really the the number one thing that I that I like about this bike is really the uh, is really the, the performance. And a lot of that performance has to do with with the weight of this bike. It's super light. It's a super light bike. Um, I mean, it's really easy to get these bikes right around 300 pounds. You don't really have to spend much money, if any at all, to get it in the low 300s. And the motor is really punchy. So it's a 373cc single cylinder, um, 44 horse, 27 foot-pounds of torque rated. Uh, those are the, the, the peak numbers. And as far as peak numbers go, it's pretty on par with other bikes in its class. So that'd be MT-03, R3, the small CVRs, Ninja 400, etc. It's It's right around, it's pretty much normal and expected for its class. However, the difference here is since this is a single cylinder instead of a, a, a parallel twin, you get a lot more torque down low. This motor is really punchy down low. So, so when a manufacturer rates a bike, rates its motor, when a manufacturer rates its motor, rates the bike, it's always the, the peak number, it's always the peak horsepower, the peak torque. What, what it doesn't account for is the part is the part throttle power and these bikes have plenty of it even though their peak numbers are similar to other bikes in its class because it's a single cylinder uh, it feels like it has more power than it, it really does in my opinion um, that combined with how light it is uh, makes it pretty punchy um, it, it's definitely not going to win many races or anything like that it's not a, a true sport bike but i think it is 
appropriate performance for the type of bike that it is, right? It's kind of this neo retro cafe racer, um, you know, style bike that cafe racers are not supposed to go, they're not meant to go 200 miles an hour, right? They're meant to kind of zip around the city, have a lot of power, have power down low, you know, maybe be able to pick the wheel up easily in first gear type of thing, but not necessarily win any, any drag races on the highway. And I think that this motor and the power to weight ratio really is appropriate for this, for this bike. So power to weight ratio, for example, it's about or a little bit better than uh, like a five liter Mustang GT, like a, a Mustang with a Coyote motor in it. Uh, it's about that same power to weight. You know, however, it's, it's another, it's a whole other discussion beyond that. I mean, you're, you're not gonna, this bike is, even though the power to weight is about or a little bit better than a Mustang GT, it's it's not gonna be one. It's not actually faster than one because of the because of the drag and all that stuff. But uh, but the but the power to weight is what it is. So you know that being said, you know down low under 85 miles an hour or so, this bike it's it's pretty punchy. You know of course this one's been modified, so uh, it's probably got a, a little more power here and there. But again, nothing nothing crazy. I mean I, I wouldn't be surprised if even with the cat taken off, the tune, uh, muffler deleted, air filter. I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, maybe only picked up two and a half, three horsepower or something like that. It's, it, it's, it's not going to be much, but, um, but again, because it's so light, as you can see, the passing power is, I mean, it's, it's appropriate for the bike. I mean, you just saw there, I needed to pick up, you know, five to eight miles an hour, didn't need to shift down didn't need to, to pin the throttle or anything like that just kind of easily easily pass right and again you'll kind of see that here i'll back it down to about seven seventy five seventy or so and just kind of ease in the throttle and you can see you know the passing power it's it's there right so just kind of tip in the throttle 50 percent throttle and you're passing whoever it is that you need to pass you don't need to kick it down a bunch of gears So again, you're totally happy with the performance. I mean, it's got adjustable suspension as well. It has steel brake lines, which a lot of bikes its class do not have. Um, it's got a quick shifter up and down. So I mean, it, it's, it's got plenty of performance for uh, this class of bike. And we're back in the garage here momentarily. Kind of hard to talk about the appearance of the bike while being on it. Makes a little bit more sense to film um, off the bike so you guys can get a better idea. but. Yeah, I mean, as far as appearance goes, nothing looks like this. There's nothing else out there that looks even remotely close, especially in its class, right? So you take a look at the side profile. You don't see a lot of naked bikes that have clip-ons, which give it this cool cafe racer kind of retro look to it. You can see the seat is basically um, on the same plane as the tank and the handlebars, which or sorry, the clip-ons, which give it that cafe racer look. It's got a cool color scheme. It's got this nice matte white on silver, which I've gotten a lot of compliments on. Right, you can see the front fender, matte white, full LED, so LED, a headlight, LED tail light. Again, it's got this cool, you know, big single headlight up front, like an old school bike would have, but, uh, but also happens to be LED kind of with a, a halo as well, which makes it modern looking. But yeah, I mean, spoked wheels, again, gives it that really retro look, really a cool look. Don't see it really on any bike other than MV Agustas and some of the uh, some of the adventure bikes, but it's got the cool trellis frame. You can see the, the motor, you can see everything kind of going on in there, which I think is why some people think that it's an older bike, maybe. I think maybe that's why they get that impression, but yeah, I mean, you look at the, the Cooper, you look at the, sorry, my GoPro is just clicking off on its own, but uh, you look at the Cooper header, it's got the, the cool colors going on. Again, all exposed. It's not covered up by fairings or anything like that. Even the spring for the uh, the rear suspension, it's white, kind of matches the paint scheme there. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool, it's a super cool look. And they really did a good job with just designing the aesthetic of it. Even the dash, it's not, the most functional dash in the world, but 
again, for the type of bike it is, it kind of makes sense to have this, uh, you know, it's, it's digital, but it doesn't look, it's not TFT. It kind of looks like it's an older dash. I mean, it almost looks like a, like a Casio watch from the nineties. Again, it really matches the aesthetic of this bike, but it has some of the new flavor, meaning, uh, like our controls here, hopefully you can, hopefully it's showing up on camera, but those are actually illuminated. They're backlit LEDs, which is a really cool look, right? Maybe I can, maybe we would have told there if I turn it off. Yeah, see, so you can see fully illuminated and backlit controls. Again, you see the, you see the halo headlight, which is again, super cool look, even though it kind of looks old school because it just has the one big light in the front. Yeah, I mean, hard to, I don't think I've, I've came across anybody that didn't like the aesthetic of this bike. So, I mean, that's really one of the top, top things that I love about this bike. It just, the aesthetic is just really unique and really, really cool looking. Really unique look there. It makes the bike almost look, I, I don't want to say more expensive than it really is. That seems kind of pretentious. It just... It, uh, it looks very unique. People notice it. So, um, you know, and that could be a good or a bad thing. I mean, for me, it, it's kind of a bad thing. I don't really like, I don't really like a lot of attention. I'd rather just kind of be allowed to, to do my thing. But this bike, it, it, it gets a lot of attention. This bike gets a lot of attention. So um, it's, it's pretty often that I get stopped um, for, for good reasons. There are always positive comments. I've never gotten a negative comment about it. Uh, but it's usually something like, you know, what kind of bike is that? I've never seen a bike like that before. Is that an old bike that you restored? Is that a BMW? Um, or they're surprised that it's a Husqvarna. Maybe they kind of have experience with dirt bikes or something and they're surprised that, uh, that, it, that it's a Husqvarna. I've even gotten somebody tell me that, oh, that they only thought Husqvarna made sewing machines, right? So, um, so it, 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 it's both a, a good and bad thing, but uh, just the, the fact that I get stopped all the time and just the fact that um, people are always asking me about it in a positive way, it kind of it kind of tells you that that the appearance of this thing is, is at least unique and at least notable enough for people who don't know anything about bikes to stop and, and, and approach you. Um, the third thing about these bikes that I really like are the features. So, you know, again, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but it's got a quick shifter up and down, which for the class is not common. Uh, it doesn't work super well, uh, to be honest with you. It's not the smoothest quick shifter ever, but it, it, but it, but it is there, right? It is there, and for the most part, it does work pretty well. It's also got a full LED, it also has a full LED suite. So you see here all the controls, all LED, which again, not very common. You rarely see that, especially a bike in this class. Um, and again, I mentioned earlier, full LEDs. So LED headlight, LED tail light. Again, not something that you that you see very often. Um, still, still brake line, which is, is a nice feature to have. Um, fully adjustable suspension both front and rear so preload bound rebound you can adjust all those things uh, again not typical for its class so it, it makes it nice right you can you can adjust it for your weight you can adjust it the way that you like it especially if you're a beginner rider uh, you're probably not going to you're probably not going to care about squeezing every last bit of performance out of the suspension you're probably going to be more uh, worried about the ride making sure it's comfortable making sure you can stay on it for long periods of time so you can get that experience that experience up and that adjustable suspension allows you to do that okay sorry about that guys just uh trying to figure out where i'm gonna go here i think i'm actually gonna head over this way
So next thing that I want to talk about is uh, is the aftermarket support. So this is not talked about very often uh, for these bikes, but the aftermarket support for these is, is pretty good. It's got a decent support from Husqvarna itself, which is nice if you want to kind of hop up the bike, but you want OEM quality components. You don't want any uh, quote unquote junk, so to aftermarket junk, so to speak. It is nice to have. They got a pretty good suite of of aftermarket Husqvarna parts. So, for example, they've got they've got levers. They've got uh, lightweight lightweight brake discs. They've got um, you know a stealth sprocket, comfort seat or style seat, however way you want to put that. Um, also, there's some variances in the European market and the U.S. market. So between the Vitpil and models. So for example, like on mine, I changed to the European style LED, LED turn signals. So that's something that's supported through KTM or Husqvarna. Um, the, the little tank, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, like the little, the little name plates on the side of the tank that say 401 in the United States. In other countries, the uh, Vitpilin 250s, they actually just say Vitpilin on them. So you could change it to that model if you like. So there's a lot of, you know, kind of little things that, that you could do to these bikes uh, that don't require you to go through the aftermarket. You, you can buy quality OEM parts and kind of tinker with the bike. So, and if you want to go beyond that, it's got the Vitpilin 401s and Svartpilin 401s uh, just in general have a have a okay aftermarket but what really opens it up is uh, the ktm duke 390s are, are the same thing so pretty much all the parts that'll work on a 390 duke will also work on these so all the sprockets uh the rear sets can be modified to work on these bikes uh, a lot of the carbon fiber parts things like that they actually um they, they've got a there's a pretty good amount of parts that will work on a duke the levers and everything they're the exact same thing so you've got a, a pretty good you've got a, a pretty strong aftermarket support for a, a bike that's so small and what i really like about it too is the parts are not expensive either so you can get quality parts for these bikes and not spend a ton of money which you know again for the target audience for a beginner rider or maybe somebody who's who's on their second bike uh, you're probably not going to want to drop fifteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars for a titanium exhaust right you're probably not going to want to do that i'm sure somebody out there would would do that um but most people are not they're going to want to spend you know maybe a couple hundred dollars to to, to mess with the bike kind of pop it up a little bit personalize it make it a little bit better you know if that's your budget this bike's perfect for that right the air filters are like 60 bucks the dna ones whereas you look at a sprint filter for a lot of these other bikes i mean they're a couple hundred dollars they're a couple hundred dollars right you want to buy an exhaust for you want to buy an akrapovich exhaust for an s1000 double r right i mean it, it's it's thousands right you want to buy a cooper header for these bikes i mean i've seen them as low as like 200 bucks right you want to buy a tune for them just get a fuel x light 150 dollars as opposed to uh like the for example that the brand tune for my ducati was 700 some odd dollars 760 something and that was on sale right so it's it's nice that you have a lot of options and they're not crazy expensive right they're very affordable these bikes are also very easy to work on you don't need a you don't need a lot of uh you don't need a lot of special tools or anything like that most things you could do just in your garage with just simple hand tools maybe tools that got handed down uh, from your dad or grandpa to you you'll be able to do most things on this bike uh, which which i think is, is is a huge plus right i mean if you're a beginner you're probably not going to want to spend a ton of money on on special tools right the the lithium battery charger the spanners to adjust the chain a nice set of torx keys that right the short ones the long ones and so forth so you can get into all these you know crazy cramped places that that some bikes have right these bikes you do not have to do that So and I think that's a that's a big 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 benefit to these bikes and I, I really really love that about these is you know I can 
I don't have to spend an arm and a leg buying a part for it and then spend all day trying to put it on because I have to take whatever, I have to take half the bike apart to, uh, to install it, right? And uh, anyway, so guys, I think the, the last, the last thing I'll say about these, these, these bikes and, and something that uh, I think is maybe most important for the intended buyer of these is, is overall value, right? You look at what you're getting, you're getting a unique bike, doesn't look like, doesn't look like anything else out there, right? Nothing else out there in any price range, um, right? I mean, you, you think about it, for somebody who doesn't ride bikes, even if you have a Panigale Super Legera, right? Most people can't tell the difference between a Panigale Super Legera and a 959 Panigale from from the past, right? Most people, they're just gonna see it's a red cross rocket, right? Red sport bike and that's it. You know, these bikes, the Vip Pillin, they look so unique, so different. There's just nothing else that compares to it. I mean, the only thing is maybe like an XSR from Yamaha, maybe the Super Veloce from MV Agusta. Uh, but those bikes, they're, they're way more expensive. They're way heavier, uh, way, way bigger, right? They have, it's just a different, way more performance. Um, They, they just, they don't have the uh, kind of beginner bike, kind of playful feel that these bikes do. Nothing else out there. So you get that, you get plenty of performance, you get the the power to weight of a Gen 3, you know, Coyote 5 liter Mustang, basically, right? Fully adjustable suspension, you know, Bybury, Bybury brakes, you get a big aftermarket, you get a quick shifter up and down, Right, you get easy maintenance, you get, I mean, you don't need a lot of tools to work on these things. You get LEDs everywhere, I mean, you don't... I didn't really realize how good of a deal these bikes were until I, until I bought one. I go this way. Until I bought one and kind of lived with it for a while, so... I know for me, this bike out the door with the uh, document fees and the freight fees and all this stuff, it was still less than $7,000, brand new, in the middle of, of COVID basically. So I wasn't gonna get a break on the MSRP or anything like that. Under $7,000, that's with, the, with California taxes and everything, right? So for less than $7,000, you get all those things that I just mentioned, plus, you know, a, a unique ownership experience, right? This bike, I don't have to, I don't have to look back and go, ah, you know what? I think I should have got a CBR 500 or something like that, or I feel like I should have bought some other naked bike, right? Some other, maybe a big naked, like a hyper naked, right? I don't, I don't have to look back and go, you know what? I think I should have bought an MT-09. I think I should have bought an MT-10. It's just this bike is in its its own unique class, completely different from anything else. And they're just you don't go wanting for anything else, even though it, it is a, a small bike or, or a beginner bike, right? I, I don't I don't sit up at night thinking about oh, I, sh I should have did this, I should have did that. So we're gonna, as soon as we get a green here, we'll kind of test the performance out and uh, kind of let you guys know how this thing sounds. light here I'll go ahead and feed in some throttle as well so you can kind of get a feel for what you're getting for the money and it looks like we are clear and here we go okay front end came up a little bit there so 
Yeah, so normally on this bike, I find if uh, first gear, if I crack the throttle, if I whip the throttle or chop it, however way you want to put that, the front wheel will come up pretty easy. That's without me uh, pulling back on the bars or anything like that. So, I mean, again, plenty, definitely not a super fast bike again. Even though it has the power to weight of a Coyote Mustang, you're, you're, you're not going to beat one in a race for uh, because there, there's other factors beyond just power to weight that decides how fast a, a bike or car is. Alright guys, so with that being said, I'll kind of show you what, I'm not going to push the bike hard here, but I'll kind of show you what the passing performance is like. Alright, so here we are, third gear, not in super high RPM, but I'll just kind of roll the throttle on. You can see it's got plenty of power to pass, right? It's definitely not a race bike or anything like that, but it's got plenty of power to pass. I'll even lug the motor here, leave it in fourth, and I'll, again, I'll roll the throttle on. Right, plenty of power to pass. You don't have to kick it down to second or anything like that. No problem there. And you'll kind of see how nimble this bike is. I mean, you know, super easy to just, to just throw around because of its light weight. I mean, just absolutely weighs nothing. show you uh, okay, it's what a little rpm yeah let's go ahead and try to make this light here so again perfect example there we saw the light turn yellow i'm in fourth gear don't really it's helpful that I don't have to kick it down in the third or second I could just roll the throttle on get through that light no problem kind of same thing here right it's got nothing crazy but uh, I mean plenty of performance for plenty of, of I, I would say usable performance for most riders right especially beginner riders you know if you don't if you don't feel comfortable having a super powerful bike, right, you think that it's more appropriate to have something lighter, something with less power, then this is perfect. So, I mean, that might have not been the, the best example there. I was kind of a little bit happy on the gas there, but getting around this car, again, just a kind of fifth gear squeeze, right? No problem. Six gear, same thing. If I'm at 70 and maybe I need to pass somebody, again, I'll just kind of, let me get to 70 real quick. Yeah, I'll kind of just roll it on, you know. And I've got a pretty good headwind right now. There you go, 70 to 80 without much effort at all. Don't need to pin the throttle, don't need to kick it down a couple gears or anything like that. Plenty of usable power. So, Anyways, guys, hey, thank you so much for joining me. I hope it didn't get too boring for you. Uh, I just wanted to kind of get a change of scenery here. Do something a little bit different. I normally do uh, videos um, with me in the garage or off the bike in some fashion. So I hope you guys like this. And uh, anyways, we'll, uh, we'll talk later. Please, if you, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. It helps me a ton. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much.